Hi, my name is Shilin Patel and I'm from Duke University. I'm also a developer for the Internet to Grouper project. This is the end users track of the Grouper training. In this video, I'll be talking about the admin UI, and this is part three. Here are the topics that I'll be covering in this part. In part one, I focused on giving an introduction and then talking about the different browse modes in the admin UI and showing a demo of that. In part two, I covered searching and viewing entity details. In this part, I'll first cover folders as far as how to create, delete, and edit them, and then I'll show how to assign privileges and view the audit log for folders. Um, and then I'll also be covering groups in the admin UI as well. Um, I'll show how you can create, delete, and edit them, and also cover privileges on groups. Uh, the next video will cover more on groups as well. So here I'm logged into the admin UI as a test user. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is create a new folder. So I'm going to click on the Manage Groups link here so that it narrows down the parts of the hierarchy that I have access to update. Um, and so now my current location is Duke University Engineering. I'm going to click on Apps. Um, and here I'm going to click on, a, on Create Folder so that I can create a new, um, in this case, an application-specific folder. Uh, so my folder name is going to be uh, self-service application. The folder ID will be self underscore service underscore app. Uh, the folder ID typically doesn't change because it's often referenced by applications. And I'll give it a description of my self-service application. I can either save and return to the apps folder or save and work in the new folder that gets created or save and assign privileges to the new folder that gets created. Uh, so I'm going to save and work in the new folder. So here you can see that the location has been updated. Um, and that now I'm in the, the self-service application folder. Um, I can delete the folder now if I want, um, which gives me a confirmation, but I'm going to cancel this right now. I can edit the folder, which allows me to edit the folder name, ID, um, and description. I can also set an alternate folder ID path. Um, so the alternate folder ID path allows folders to be searchable using an alternate name. And the format is the same as the format of the folder ID path. Uh, this is mainly useful if you're moving or renaming a folder uh, because that allows the, uh, the folder to continue to be found using the old name um, or rather the old folder ID path uh, by applications that may have that path hard-coded. Uh, so I'm not going to actually make any changes here, so I'll just go back to manage folders. So next I'm going to talk about folder privileges. I'll give a quick refresh on the privilege, privilege name since they can get confusing. Um, so there are two types of folder privileges. There's create group and create folder. Uh, create group is also known as the create privilege um, and it allows users to create groups in that folder. The create folder privilege is also known as the stem privilege and this allows users to create subfolders. Um, and the reason why I'm mentioning the create and the stem privilege uh, names here is because in parts of the uh, admin UI, those names are uh, referred to. So I'm back in the admin UI um, in the self-service application uh, folder. And so now I can click on this link here to show entities with the create group privilege, um, or I can do the same thing for the create folder privilege. Um, and if I click on that, you can see that the test user, which is the user that I'm logged in as, has uh, that privilege. Um, so basically, when a user creates a folder, that user automatically gets both the create group and the create folder privileges. I can click on the has direct privileges here, um, and then that shows me again that the test user um, has both of these privileges, and I can update those if I want. I'll return to the previous page. Uh, now I can assign this privilege to more entities, so let me click on that and I'll do a search for test user 2. Um, and um, I can give test user 2 the create, group the create group privilege and also the create folder privilege if I want. Um, assign privileges. I can return back to the manage uh, folders and click on show entities with create group privilege and now here uh, the test user 2 is here. Uh, so I can click on the has direct privilege link for test user 2. Um, I can unselect create group and assign privileges. 
uh, return to the previous screen, and now test user 2 is no longer in the list. Um, you could also assign uh, other groups to have uh, this privilege. Uh, so let me click on the assign link again, and this time let me search for the engineering admins group. Uh, so here is found Duke University Engineering Etsy admins and I want to give members of that group the create group privilege um, so I'll hit assign privileges go back to manage folders uh, click on show entities with create group privilege and now here you can see that the engineering admins has direct privileges test user has direct privileges uh, and test user 3 has indirect privileges um, and the reason why test user 3 has indirect privileges is because test user 3 is a member of the, uh, the engineering admins group. So if I click on the has indirect privileges link here, um, it'll explain that. It'll show that the current entity is test user 3, um, and test user 3 is a member of the engineering Etsy admins group, which has the create privilege. So next, I'm going to talk a bit about the audit log for folders. Now, once again, I'm in the self-service application folder. At the bottom, there's a link for the audit log. Uh, so first of all, you can filter the result, um, the results by date. Uh, so you can filter uh, based off of a particular date, before a date, uh, since a date, or between a couple of dates. Uh, you can also sort the results. And here are the results for this folder below. So for example, um, at 12.11, um, the stem was added. Um, then say for example at 12.18 and 8 seconds, uh, test user uh, using the grouper UI um, assigned the create privilege to test user 2. Um, and then a few seconds later, uh, the test user again using the grouper UI um, unassigned the create privilege from test user 2. Um, and then just a few seconds later, test user, again using the grouper UI, assigned the engineering admins group um, the create privilege for this folder. Uh, you can also show the extended result um, for the audit log. And this basically just gives a bit more information about each of the results. So now I'm going to move on to groups. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is create a new group in the self-service application folder. Uh, say for example I want a group uh, for all the admins of this application because the application um, would need to know that. So I can create a new group by clicking on the create group link here. I can give it the name of admins. Uh, the ID can also be admins. Um, and like the folder ID, the, the group ID typically doesn't change either. And I could give it a description, the admins for the self-service application. I can assign certain privileges to everyone. Um, so by default, read and view is selected here, um, which means anyone that can log into the uh, group or UI can see that this group exists and be able to read the memberships. Um, if it's not a public group and that's probably not what you want to do. Um, if it's a group that people can opt in and opt out of on their own, then you may want to select the opt in and opt out uh, checkboxes here so that everyone can get that. Now you can also select uh, group types to add to this group. Um, I'll cover some of these group types uh, in a future video. Uh, you can save this and start working on the new uh, group or you can save it and start adding new members, or you can save it and then make this group into a composite. Um, I'll cover add members and composites in a, another video. So let me save this for now. Uh, so now if I want, I could delete it. Um, again, I'm given a confirmation, but I'm not going to delete it. And I can also edit uh, the group. Uh, so I can change the name or the ID or the description or uh, the privileges I get assigned to everybody or the group types. And similar to the folder um, edit view, I can also 
um, add an alternate ID path here. And again, the alternate ID path allows groups uh, to be searchable using an alternate name, and the format is the same as the ID path in this case. Um, and again, this is useful if you're moving uh, or renaming groups and you want the uh, group to continue to be found using the old name since applications may refer to it using the old name. So I'm going to return back to the group summary. So I didn't mention this before, but after I created the group, um, there's a bunch of information about the group at the top. Um, so the name of the group is admins. Uh, the path is Duke University colon engineering colon apps colon self-service application colon admins. Um, and the path basically includes the, uh, the names of the ancestor folders, all colon separated. And the ID is admins, and the ID path is do colon engineering colon apps colon self underscore service underscore app colon admins. And the ID path includes the ancestor um, folder IDs, um, again, all colon separated with the group ID at the end. Um, and so the next thing I'm going to do is talk a bit about privileges. Uh, so I can show entities with the admin privilege or update, read, view, opt-in, or opt-out. Uh, since they're all similar, I'll just do uh, I'll just do admin. So you can he see here that the test user has um, the admin privilege for this group. Um, and basically, when you when a user creates a group, they automatically get the admin privilege on that group, um, which means that they can fully manage the group and delete it if they want. Uh, so I can assign this privilege to more entities and similar to before I can search here for a user or a uh, or a group so let me search for all the test users uh, so I'll just search for test user uh, and that brings up three results uh, so say if I want test user 2 uh, to have the admin privilege then I can click on assign privileges uh, I can go back to the group summary and then go back to show entities with the admin privilege and here you can see uh, test user and test user 2. Um, and similar to the to when I was assigning privileges to folders you can also um, have groups um, here as well. And again similar you can click on one of these has direct privilege links and you can edit it or remove the privilege. So that's all for this video. Um, you can click on the quiz link in the video description to reinforce your knowledge of this topic. And here are some links you can visit for more information. Thanks.